Hey everyone, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors. Well, I'm out at Muir Lake. Of course, this lake well known for its uh, fly fishing opportunities for trout. And it is also known as a bit of an education center. And thanks to a number of groups uh, who have uh, collaborated over the past year, some new signage has gone up. And I had an opportunity to reach out to Peter Little, who was uh, one of the folks instrumental in putting these signs up, that gives somewhat of a history, not only to the anglers that have made fly fishing an important staple of activity here in Alberta, but also some insight into what trout eat, uh, the different types of food sources, and what kinds of flies are available, that type of thing. I caught up with Peter to get some background on the new signs and the purpose behind this unique fly fishing area. Peter, I guess, first of all, thanks so much for taking a little bit of time and chatting with us today. Um, maybe give us a little bit of background. When was it uh, that the, the signs originally went into Muir Lake? Well, that was, um, that was about 20 years ago um, when there were uh, four fishing clubs in Edmonton at that time. They kind of all decided to get together and uh, try to create, um, you know, a quality fishery out at uh, Muir Lake, which at the time was basically a fishless slough, uh, nothing stocked in there, whatever. So we, you know, did some fundraising, working together. Um, and uh, then got on with the work of installing power to the lake so we could aerate it, uh, clean up the, the shoreline and, um, and various other sorts of things. And, and then working with um, Alberta Fish and Wildlife in terms of getting a fish stocking program started there. So, yeah, 20 years ago. And, um, and it's been a very successful fishery since. Yeah, I, I, I certainly want to come back and talk about the fishery itself. But, uh, of course, you also installed uh, a number of panels. Um, and I, I kind of called it an education center. And, and I guess in many ways it is. Uh, for folks that may not have any connection to fly fishing, there are signs there that represent uh, information about how fish uh, feed and, and all of that type of thing. What What prompted you guys to say, Hey, this is a this is a cool idea. Let's do it. Well, it, it seemed a good opportunity to create a little bit of um, information about and um, education on on recreational angling. And so, you know, we we first of all we thought, well, we first of all we need a large welcome sign to show, you know, who's involved in this and whatever. Um, and then we came up with the idea of, well, I, you know, it would be a good idea to also put in a few plaques that would honor some of the people that um, uh, have helped create the recreational fishery that we have in Alberta today. And so we installed, there were three plaques installed. And, and then um, came up with the idea of, well, you know, um, Perhaps the best thing to use as an educational platform would be to put up some signs that show the, the major natural food items that trout find to eat when they arrive, you know, in the hatchery truck um, and to show uh, these, these life forms at, at each stage of their life and life cycle and, and show some fishing techniques associated with each stage of that life cycle. And um, so, yeah, we did the fundraising, uh, raised some money and uh, got a lot of support and did it. <laughs> and Unfortunately, course, weather took its toll and 20 years later, we had to replace them. So, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they, they look absolutely fabulous in, in terms of their, their, the, the colors that are involved. They're very easy to read and, 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 and of course, very accessible for everyone to to walk down that path and, and get a handle on the information. Is there any plans to uh, sort of induct new uh, fly anglers into that walk of fame? Well, we did this year. Um, we had uh, we had a plaque honoring George and Joan Mitchell, who you'll probably remember for the originators of the Alberta Fishing Guide. <laughs> and uh, we wanted to add their son, Barry Mitchell, to that for his major contributions to, um, you know, sport fishing in, in the province and his conservation work. So we added Barry Mitchell. And then um, the, the 
two the two clubs that uh, um, contributed, you know, money, most of the money towards it. They were the Edmonton Trout Fishing Club and the Northern Lights Fly Ties. Both uh, nominated one other person too. Um, the um, the Edmonton Trout Club nominated Reg Denny for his work in teaching fly tying and his you know, his books and so on. And Northern Lights um, um, proposed uh, Don Anderson for all his work in establishing you know uh, stock fisheries and, and and environmental work that he's done over the years. So yes, we added two more plaques. Uh, so it's now up to five. And, you know, hopefully uh, over the next few years, we could add a couple more because there are we, certainly a number of people who deserve to be on it. <laughs> you, indi- you indicated that the, the fishery has done well over 20 years. Is it, would it be fair to still call it a, a trout, um, a, a, sorry, a trophy lake? Um, yes, in many ways, it was set up. The regulations were specifically set up to encourage the growth of trout to a larger sizes. So the regulations would only allow uh, keeping of one fish over 50 centimeters. And um, the vast majority of, of, of anglers out there tend to be catch and release anglers and who are, in fact, go there specifically because it has developed a reputation for its large uh, rainbows and browns, especially. And um, unfortunately, this particular year, there was a major wind, uh, summer kill in early June from the heat wave. And uh, so it will take uh, a year or two to recover back to what it was. But um, we're working on it with the with the hatchery's help. <laughs> Outstanding. Peter, any, any other uh, developments uh, being planned for Muir Lake uh, as you look into your crystal ball? In fact, we've been working on, in, in conjunction with the signs, is a digital version of the information. Um, on the signs, there is a QR code on each one, so you can you know, scan it into your phone and, and, and read the, the information at your leisure. Um, but we've also worked on a, on a version of them. Uh, it's basically a collection of about um, oh, 44 slides um, that's designed specifically for uh, teachers of outdoor education and, and anybody who's interested in, in teaching and introducing uh, people, especially youth, to, um, to recreational angling. And uh, we built into that uh, oh, about 130 links to the videos and additional information uh, so that it can be used for educational purposes and, uh, and so on. And we're currently piloting that with, in a few schools. And it's freely available uh, on the Northern Lights website to anybody who'd like to see it and, and use it. And while we may be coming to an end of a fly fishing season here in Alberta, I do hope you get out here in the springtime and take in these interesting signs. In the meantime, uh, you'll maybe notice behind me the uh, aeration system that is up and operating in uh, anticipation of the ice over. Of course, these aeration systems uh, operated by the Alberta Conservation Association, not only here at Muir Lake, but at a number of lakes throughout Alberta. All right, well, until next time, everyone, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors.